If you have a Chinese crested or you are thinking about getting a Chinese crested and you want to know how to take care of their face and their ears, just like a groomer, make sure to keep on watching this video. My name is Tara and welcome to Zen Dog. On this channel, I'm gonna share all the things about training and grooming that are gonna help your dog learn to love dog grooming. All right, let's get right into the video. First thing is I do my best to keep the hair out of the way just in case it were to fall and accidentally get clipped by the clippers. Another thing that will really help you is to reduce static because static is sometimes what causes hair to jump into the way of the clipper by mistake. So I do mist the, the chest and the hair with a little bit of a moisturizing spray and then kind of push the loose hairs down. The first thing you want to do whenever you're shaving your dog's throat or you know shaving their face in general is to establish your pattern lines and once you get those established it's really easy to just rinse and repeat every time you do a shave. So if you haven't yet done that or if you want to do something a little different than maybe the way your dog came to you, you can do that now. The clipper that I really love for this is the Brav Mini by Wall, and this clipper is only for Luna's face and ears. I do not use it anywhere else. I don't use it on paw pads, and I definitely don't use it on Sani because it's only for her face and ears. That's my rule. I have clippers for everything that I do on her here at my house. I like to do the round throat design. I don't do the V. I don't think Cresteds really get the V. I think that's more of a poodle thing. Poodle shaves can optionally have the V or the rounded lines, but I don't think Cresteds get the V at all. I've never seen it. The rounded one really looks best on them. And you want to establish where the sternum starts. So if you can see her throat really goes all the way down and the shaving portion stops right at the point where her sternum is so that I'm showing as much neck as I can without being improper. With my clipper I go along the outside edge and I clip inward toward the center of the throat. This is just because that's the way the hair grows. The hair on Luna's throat grows down and away from her, I really like to clip in reverse and that's going to be best if you want a very smooth and short shave as possible. But do note that that can come with some um, clipper irritation. I'll show you at the end of the video how I help that. So if you've ever had problems with that, make sure to stick through to the end of the video. And if you're interested in knowing how to make her hair the way it is in this video, I'm going to link a, another video up in the corner that you'll definitely want to watch about how to do top knots. Luna gets her top knot put into a flip and I have that whole tutorial that I will link up above. So here what you can see with the clipper is I'm doing my best to gently smooth out all the hair along her cheekbones and they have a whisker like spot along the side of their face so I really am careful not to nick that with the clippers or to make it bleed and especially when you're going along the eyes like here I'm actually using my free index finger if you can see and covering um, or I was just in the last one I'm covering her eye and pushing the lid up the bottom lid up so that I can stretch it as much as you know it's comfortable just to make sure that I'm getting a nice smooth shave I'm always offering treats to help her enjoy this, of course. And going along the whiskers on her little snout is always the most ticklish, so she lifted a paw to say that it was tickling there. And I'm really careful doing small, gentle strokes. I don't like to take real long um, clipper strokes along this. I, I just don't really like it. It makes me nervous, so I do short strokes. And I'm going along all these little round and chiseled areas of her face and trying to clip in reverse as much as possible. And you can see the direction of the hair growth and make sure that you're going reverse. So here I have another angle that you can see. The line goes from the corner of the outside corner of the eye down to the mole. If you can see that like whisker mole on the side of the cheek, then from there it goes straight down the throat kind of at an angle and then you can complete it with the round part at the bottom. 
here I am gonna shave along the mouth and this definitely requires that you pull that lip tight uh, pull it backwards so that the lip becomes straight instead of you know round and puffy along the teeth and along the mouth so I'm also pulling it down and away so that I can get into the flue the flue is that little like um, curve in the lower lip and it's usually so that that large canine can kind of sit outside the mouth not all dogs of course have that but Chinese Cresteds do so that's where you want to tighten it and then clip that part out and I find that Luna most often gets irritation right on the jaw so I'm actually really careful when I'm clipping underneath the jaw and I do move the skin from side to side so that I'm not pushing the clipper against the jawbone too much. And then of course going down the bridge of the nose can be really ticklish for dogs, so I'm pretty quick. But Luna, like I said, she's had a lot of training, especially when she was a puppy. I was always feeding her treats after pretty much every single clipper stroke. And here, I, looking back, I would probably have stopped and given her a break. And any time you see that tongue come out, stop clipping. You, you'll want to make sure and actually start to understand the precursors to that, which is usually I can feel it in her throat, I can feel it um, in her mouth, through, through her mouth I should say, and I can tell that she's about to stick her tongue out. Once you start to see that tongue, definitely don't clip. Just let them finish their licking and put their tongue away. And if you just so happen to nick a tongue, it will bleed for a long time. And if you can get them to lick anything frozen, um, that will be most beneficial. I always have chicken broth ice cubes in my freezer just for licking and it could really, really help if that was to happen to me. I'm really careful, so if you do have an accident, that is how you can help it. We are going to shave Luna's ears now and as you can tell she knows this fun little trick where she lays her chin down on a pillow. Once she lays down I present her with the pillow, I put it underneath her chin and then she rests her chin and that really really helps shaving the ears. It helps me because I know that she is going to lay still. This is a cooperative care training technique that I do to help her relax for a lot of things, but it really helps with the ears in this situation. I actually don't pluck ears. I don't think that it's necessary for my dog and her breed, and for a lot of dogs it's not necessary, but if you are unsure, talk to your vet, talk to your groomer, and do what feels right to you. All I do is shave the opening, so I shave in all directions, but away from the ear opening, and I am very, very careful with the ear fold. That's the part where the ear kind of overlaps itself, the skin coming from the base of the ear and the skin um, on the tip of the ear meet at a certain point and it, it has a fold. You can cut that very easily, so be super careful. What I do is I shave the opening and then I shave the underside of the ear, which is what you're seeing now. I shave away toward the tip of the ear all of the time. I never clip in reverse on the ear. You can easily cut the ear, slice right into the thin skin of the ear if you try to clip in reverse especially along the edges of the ear. So what I'm doing is just kind of edging it. I am using the clipper, clipping away from the center of the ear out towards the outside. And I'm using my free hand to kind of put some pressure on that ear and clip as much of the edge off as I can. I did spray some moisturizing spray just to make sure that the static electricity doesn't cause the hair to get in the way. Now we're gonna clip the outside of the ear. So what I'm doing is pushing that loose hair out of the way, like I said, and I'm also gonna use a clip just to make sure it doesn't bounce into the way of the clipper, which I've done by accident and clipped too much hair before. So now what I'm doing is I am holding the ear against my free finger and using the clipper to clip down away towards the tip. Just remember that, always clip towards the edge and towards the tip of the ear. I actually don't clip all the way to the base of the head. That's completely optional. It's really just dependent on what you prefer to see. I like to leave a little more hair on the head, on the crest of Luna, so I don't clip all the way to the base. 
I actually use the fold on the ear as a guide. So wherever the fold is, I clip straight across. So she actually really has about a quarter of her ear at the base with hair still on it. And again, I'm just gently edging the tip of the ear and the edge with my clipper to make sure it's as short as possible. So here's how I take care of clipper burn and try to reduce clipper irritation. I use some witch hazel and a cotton pad and I just dab it onto her neck. That has been really, really helpful. That was a neat little trick that I picked up along the way through my grooming journey. And she really, really has minimal um, redness or rashing after being shaved. And honestly, if you're using a nice, good, clean clipper and if you're very careful, you're gonna minimize it already. But the witch hazel can really help. So that is it. Thank you everybody for watching. I am linking four videos here right now which will cover how I washed, blow dried, brushed, and did Luna's nails. So if you have a Chinese crested powder puff or really any long haired small dog and you would like to know exactly how to groom them at home, make sure to watch these four videos here. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.